My Pretend Pastry Kitchen. I'm Emma, and today I'll be showing you how to make Samoa's inspired cupcakes. It's Girl Scout cookie season, so today we're making sweet treats inspired by my favorite Girl Scout cookie. These are vanilla-based cupcakes filled and topped with salted caramel buttercream, rolled around in some toasted coconut, and topped off with that same salted caramel that we use in the buttercream. I hope you enjoy! Okay, to start, we are going to sift together in a medium mixing bowl one and a third cup of flour, two and a half tablespoons of cornstarch, one teaspoon of baking powder, an eighth a teaspoon of baking soda, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Okay, and once you're all done with that, you're going to set this bowl aside. Okay, so next we're going to whip together in either a stand mixer fitted with the paddle attachment or an electric hand mixer, a third a cup of butter and three quarters cup of granulated sugar. Okay, so you're going to start on the low setting just to stir all the ingredients together so you don't make a giant mess. And then in order to whip the butter, you're going to put it up to the highest comfortable setting on your mixer. The mixture should be fluffy and pale yellow in color when it's done. So now you're going to want to scrape down the sides of your bowl and your paddle to make sure that all of the mixture gets evenly mixed. And then we're going to add three tablespoons of vegetable oil. Canola oil also works if that's all you have. And then mix again, but on a low setting. We now whipped in all of this air to our butter and sugar, so we don't want to lose that. So when we add our eggs, we're also going to add them one at a time to fully incorporate everything without adding too much liquid at once, because that will deflate the mixture, and then we won't have like light and fluffy cupcakes in the end. So now we're going to mix a little bit. Now add two large eggs, one at a time like I said, and you can use the whole egg, the whites and the yolk. Once again, mix the eggs on the low setting so that we're not deflating all of that air that we just whipped into the butter. And before you're done mixing the second egg, we're going to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And mix until all of that is incorporated. So the next step is to whisk together a quarter cup of milk and a quarter cup of buttermilk. If you don't have buttermilk at home or it's expired because it got stuck in the back of the fridge, then you can easily make it with um, milk and anything acidic, so lemon juice or white vinegar are the two best options. I like to use lemon juice when I'm baking just because of the taste. but. Um, it doesn't make a huge difference. So in order to do that, for every cup of milk, just add one tablespoon of the lemon juice or the vinegar that you're adding, and um, that works as a perfect substitute for buttermilk. So you're going to want to whisk these together in a liquid measuring cup. After that, we're going to add together all of our ingredients that we've made so far, so the wet ingredients with the other wet ingredients, and then the dry ingredients that we set aside earlier. Okay, so when combining all of the ingredients that we've prepared so far, we're going to add the flour mixture that we set aside earlier in thirds, and the milk mixture in halves. So we'll start with the flour, add about a third of this, and mix a tiny bit, and then half of the milk and mix a tiny bit, and then continue that pattern until everything is well combined. We do this so gradually so that we don't deflate all of the air that we whipped into the butter earlier and any cakes or cookies that have gluten are susceptible to being over mixed which just means that you deflate all of that air and then you don't have a fluffy end product. Make 
sure to scrape down the paddle attachment and the sides of the bowl just so that everything's getting evenly mixed. Okay, so in the end, your pattern is going to be flour, milk, flour, milk, flour. And then, once everything is in this bowl, we're going to mix it on low speed, just until everything is well combined. So make sure that there's no clumps of flour or anything, but don't over mix it. Okay, so once your batter looks a little something like this, it's ready to be portioned out in your cupcake trays and baked. So I'm going to preheat my oven to 350, but this is a convection bake oven, so mine says 325. Okay, so here I have a silicone cupcake tray, but any sort of cupcake tray, metal, or aluminum is perfectly fine. Just either line or grease the inside of the cups and scoop your batter into there. each of the cups in your cupcake tray about two-thirds of the way full. If you're like me and you made them wildly uneven at first, just take a spoon and even them back out. I ended up using a little less than a quarter cup of batter for mine. And then we're going to pop them in the oven at 350 for about 16 to 19 minutes. Make sure to check on them. Um, they should look golden brown when they're done. And you should be able to put a toothpick in the center and pull it out and there's no like sticky residue. It comes out pretty clean. Okay, so this is what my cupcakes look like when they're done in the oven. This one was a little underfilled, so that'll be my snack to fuel making the buttercream, which we'll start on now. Okay, so to start the buttercream, we're gonna cream one stick of butter, which is a half cup of butter, in this bowl by mixing it alone for about two to two and a half minutes until it's nice and fluffy and like a whiter color. <laughs> salted caramel buttercream. I'm gonna add a quarter cup plus two tablespoons of salted caramel. I pre-made this because it needs to cool down before you can use it, but um, that is actually another video on this channel. Link is in the description below, so, so go check that out. Make the caramel for yourself, but I'm gonna be adding it into this to flavor our buttercream. and then just mix this up. So now we're gonna add two cups of powdered sugar to the bowl, but only a half a cup at a time to avoid making a huge mess. It'll help everything incorporate easier. Buttercream, we're going to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then give it a final mix. Okay, and then your finished buttercream should look something like this. You can pop it into the fridge until you're ready to pipe. I'm going to put it in a piping bag so that I can fill and top the cupcakes. 
Okay, so now I'm going to transfer this into a Ziploc bag because I actually don't have piping bags. So here's how to DIY one. You're going to want to... I like the freezer quart size ones because they're sturdy. I've tried the sandwich ones, they're too flimsy and they like pop on me while I'm piping. So freezer quart size Ziploc are my favorite personally. And then I take a cup, I fold one corner over so that the batter doesn't go all, or in this case buttercream, doesn't go all the way to the bottom so that I can snip the tip afterwards. And I put that inside the cup. and flip the top inside out and then it's like someone holding the bag open for me. And then when you take it out, you squeeze this down to that one corner that's folded and you snip the tip. So once your cupcakes are cooled, in order to fill them, just cut a little X shape in the middle on top and go about two thirds of the way down into the cupcake so that you don't break the bottom, but you can fill it up with buttercream. So I'm just gonna take a butter knife and make a little X pattern right in the center. Just like that. So before I start piping this frosting, I am going to just transfer these to a cutting board so that it's easier and I can give them some more space and then I don't have to pop it out and like dig through the buttercream on top. <laughs> okay, so now I am going to cut the tip off of my piping bag and then place it inside that X that we cut in the center. And then afterwards, I'm gonna do a swirl on the top and it doesn't need to look perfect because we will be dipping these in the toasted coconut later. to the side and we're going to toast up some coconut. So I preheated my oven to 200 degrees and we're just going to throw some uh, coconut flakes onto, I have lined this baking sheet with a silicone mat and I'm just going to spread out these coconut flakes, break up any big chunks, and just do your desired amount. If you want a lot of coconut then toast up a lot. Then you're going to pop this in the oven and just every like two to three minutes check on it, stir it up. It can um, burn pretty quickly so this Toast up pretty quick, keep an eye on it. So my coconut shavings actually took about four minutes and this is what it looks like. So I'm gonna let this cool down and then we're gonna dip our cupcakes upside down through the coconut shavings. Okay, so once your coconut is all cooled down, you're just gonna wanna kinda break up some of the clumps. And then just take a cupcake and roll it around upside down. Should look something like that. some of that salted caramel that we used in the buttercream earlier and putting it in a piping bag the same way we did with the buttercream and I'm going to snip off the tip and then drizzle zigzags of salted caramel across the top of the cupcakes. To make this easier to drizzle I'm going to pop it in the microwave for about 10 seconds just so that it's a little bit more liquidy in texture. finished Samoa's inspired cupcakes. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and definitely comment down below what you want to see next. Do you want to see more sweet treats inspired by Girl Scout cookies? We could do thin mints, tagalongs. Let me know. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!